Let's ultrasound! On today's edition of General Ultrasound, we're deep diving into the scanning mistakes gallery. And today we're going to talk about aorta, mistake number two. Mistake number two when imaging the aorta is mixing up the anatomy. Commonly, when you're first learning how to image the aorta with ultrasound, the aorta and the IVC get mixed up. So let's talk about the sagittal aorta versus the sagittal IVC. The aorta is gonna be a tube on the left side of the patient's body, while the IVC is gonna be on the right side of the patient's body. Also note that the IVC is going to directly touch the left lobe of the liver. So when you're imaging, your left lobe of your liver is gonna be on the top portion of the image, and then directly underneath that, touching the liver is gonna be your IVC. While the aorta is going to have echogenic fat and also the EGJ, that's your esophageal gastric junction between the aorta itself and the liver. So the aorta is not going to directly touch the liver and it's going to lie deeper on that ultrasound image than the IVC does. Also look for the branches. The aorta has the celiac access and also the superior mesenteric artery branches. The aorta is also going to have echogenic walls while the IVC is going to have thin walls that are non-echogenic. We call this no walls in ultrasound imaging. When you're trying to distinguish between the transverse aorta and the transverse IVC, the transverse IVC is going to be below and lateral to the pancreas head, while the transverse aorta is going to be below the SMA. The transverse IVC is going to be towards the right side of the patient's body, and the transverse aorta is going to be towards the patient's left side of the body. The IVC is going to be compressible, and also look for those walls. The IVC is going to have no walls, while the aorta is going to have bright white walls. In the top image, you'll notice the EGJ, this is the esophageal gastric junction, lies in between the aorta and the liver. And there's also going to be echogenic fat in this region. And you'll note that the aorta does not directly touch the bottom surface of the liver. While in the bottom image, the IVC is going to directly connect with the bottom surface of that liver. And you'll also see the left hepatic vein coursing out of the liver. The next anatomy that is commonly mixed up when imaging the aorta is the SMA, this is the superior mesenteric artery, and the CA, this is the celiac axis. The SMA should be recognized as the nose of the raccoon sign, and this is going to be shown on the next slide. The SMA comes off of the aorta inferior to the celiac axis, and in a sagittal image, the SMA is to the left side of the image, the left side of the patient's body, and the celiac axis is to the right side of the image, or the right side of the patient's body. The celiac axis is also known as the seagull sign on ultrasound when in a transverse plane. The celiac axis is the first major branch off of the abdominal aorta, and it's going to give rise to three branches, the common hepatic artery, the splenic artery, and the left gastric artery. The left gastric artery is challenging to visualize on ultrasound. So the wings of the seagull for the seagull sign are going to be the hepatic artery and the splenic artery. In the top image, you'll notice this is a sagittal representation of the aorta, and the celiac axis is going to be the first major branch of that abdominal aorta, and we'll see this below the liver. The SMA is going to be the second branch coming off of that abdominal aorta, and you'll notice this inferior to the celiac axis. In the bottom image is the ultrasound seagull sign. The aorta makes up the head of the seagull. The body of the seagull is the celiac axis with the splenic artery and the hepatic artery serving as the wings of the seagull. And we can see this in a transverse ultrasound plane. When you're performing an aorta ultrasound and you're struggling with the anatomy, find the raccoon sign on ultrasound. This is a great way to orient yourself to which vessel is which. 
Number one on this diagram is the transverse pancreas. And number one serves as the head of our raccoon. Number two and three are the raccoon's eyes. Number two is going to be the portal splenic confluence. And this is where a series of three vessels unite the portal vein, the splenic vein, and the superior mesenteric vein. Number three is going to be the splenic vein. Below that, you're going to have echogenic fat, and that echogenic fat is going to surround the nose of our raccoon, which is going to be number four, the superior mesenteric artery. Below the superior mesenteric artery is going to be number seven, and this is going to be our aorta in a transverse plane. And off of that aorta are going to be numbers eight and nine, and these are going to be the right and the left renal arteries. Below the head of the pancreas, and often this is going to be slightly lateral to the head of the pancreas, is going to be the IVC. And this is going to be number five on our diagram. And coming off of that IVC, you're going to see the renal veins. And this image, number six, represents the left renal vein. 